Okay. This is the, the big show. This weekend, I'm gonna take that big log there. I'm gonna roll it up these ramps using my TVs. Get it on the sawmill. And I'm gonna mill that big beast into dimension lumber. Let's see what we can get out of it. What do you think we can get out of this? Two by tens, a couple posts. Stay tuned. Let's see what we can get out of this big log. Only on the track. To pull this back? On the track. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, you're hung off there. Now we're gonna see how he gets the slab off. The lesson I just learned there was that when you feel resistance, if it feels unnatural, stop and investigate. The, the guides were running into the log and I was trying to force it through. And then I thought, nope. <clears throat> Need all hands on the cook to move this one. Oh. Over here on my little rack. Okay, now at this rate, it's only going to take about two hours to cut a log. Not it's probably bad, eh? cheaper to go to the sawmill and get one. <laughs> okay. Next step in the process is you flip the log up. So you got a 90 up on this up vertical. And you get your helper to sit back. That way, you get a 90 cut here. Let's have at her. We have taken that biggest log we had and we've reduced it to these uh basically a two by ten and this is the last one i'm going to be able to get out of here because it's um there's a bit of rot in the center of that log so i'm just going to put this over on the drying rack <clears throat> now this thing here now how thick is it now. Almost three inches. So, if I stood it up, yeah, I just cut this. See, the rot is only there. I may just make a post out of it. Okay, but you see, you got a lane on this side, so down here, in the center. Where do you see? Put your hand right down there and feel it. Down, oh, this? Yeah. Not bad, though. But here's the rot. So I wonder how far, if I just cut this in half. Sure. And then I see what the hell we got. Okay, but now when it's that way, you got to lock it now with your. Come on around here and look at this one. It's called the log stop. So you put them up high like that. And I believe it was uh, the YouTuber sawing with Sandy or sawmilling with Sandy. And he said, I believe it's him, he said, there's those who have cut their log dogs and those who have not yet cut their log dogs. So the secret is that you want to have this high enough to hold the log in place, but low enough so that I'm not going to hit it with the, with the saw because that absolutely catastrophic failure when you do that. So this one here, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna lower that down. 
about there is what I'm going to do. Just it's a learning experience today. I'm just going to cut this in half, and make two posts out of it. And as neighbor Ed says, I got to lock it on this side. So bring that in. Now go around the other side. <laughs> All right. So as Ed says, you want to have that over. You tighten that up so that locks the base in. <clears throat> now, I may be doing this wrong, or I may not know, but it seems to me like I don't want to be drilling a hole into my lumber. So maybe you're supposed to have a slab in there or something like that, so that you, because this is, Stacy just hacking around. Yeah, that's not very secure, is it, Ed? Well, you gotta do the other shit then, too. See, if you were making lumber for cabinet making, as one may do with a bandsaw mill, <laughs> never, um, you probably want to put a piece of wood behind there so it squishes it and you're not squishing into it. Okay, so we'll bring this one over as well. Let's do, like I was saying, <coughs> See if that makes a difference. <clears throat> tighten that up, tighten that up, and then Yeah, that's um Yeah, that should hold it. Yeah, because what happens is that the, 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 um, the band, the bandsaw, pulls it this way. So it tends to pull it into the log stops anyway. And, and now, I noticed when you cut one of the, you moved the whole log when it got small, when you were cutting. Yeah. So that means you're pushing too hard, the saw is not cutting. Oh, okay. So you want to, when I'm pushing, I got to make sure I don't, um, yeah, I'm not easier. forcing it. A little easier here, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're learning. It'll take a couple of years, but yeah. Now I said that this sawmill was, or no, this was going to take an hour. I think it has, eh? I just it's twelve twenty. <coughs> Ed's just pointed out that I could have actually driven to the lumber yard, <laughs> had a coffee with the guys at the lumber yard, and driven back with ten times as many logs and <laughs> pieces of the lumber as I've already cut. But hey. Freedom out here, man. Freedom. You know, these are my trees that blew down in the windstorm. So they're laying here. What else am I going to do with them besides while away my hours making a two by tens? Actually, what we're doing right now is we're cutting two bys because what we're going to do is put a little shelter, shelter over top of this um, end of the sawmill so the snow and the wind and the rain doesn't beat down on the old power sister. Okay, cut her off. Have successfully reduced that log into
two two and a half by fives. Standard dimension lumber, two and a half by fives. No, you got one by four. The other one you cut off. No, they're both both they're both five. Oh. And one, two, three. Two by tens. Okay guys. I'm gonna head home before it starts to rain. So <laughs> That's it for today. Ed's going to head home before it starts to rain. We're praying for rain here. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for tuning in. Give me the old thumbs up. Like and subscribe, folks. Take care of yourselves. And come on back next week to see what kind of mischief we get up to. <laughs>